The U.S. presidential motorcade consists of multiple specialty vehicles and a staff of over 100 people at any given point. And this heavily contributes to the stupefying $350 million, which is the annual cost of transporting the President of the United States. So why is Biden's new motorcade so expensive? In this video, we'll look at 16 reasons why. Stick around to the end to see Biden's new bus dubbed the Ground Force One. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more so expensive videos. Let's get cracking. The first reason why the U.S. presidential motorcade is so expensive is its sheer size. Its anatomy is unlike any other in the world and it comes with specialty vehicles of different kinds for the protection and well-being of the president and all who travel with him. The U.S. presidential motorcade is comprised of 1. The root car, pilot car, and the sweepers. At the front of the U.S. presidential motorcade, you'll see the root car, the pilot car, and the sweepers. The root car and pilot car perform much the same job. The root car scouts ahead of the presidential motorcade and can be minutes ahead of it, with the occupants keeping their eyes open and alerting the motorcade to potential or current problems. The pilot car, on the other hand, is usually seconds or a single minute ahead of the motorcade, and the personnel inside are expected to keep alert, spot trouble in time, and sound the alarm. Sometimes the pilot car is followed by cops on high-powered bikes who are tasked with cutting off traffic so that the motorcade can pass in peace. Sweepers, on the other hand, comprise of cops on cars and bikes who are at the head of the motorcade. Their description is to keep the way clear so that all can move at a constant speed. Let's take a break here for the quiz. How many vehicles do you think make up the typical U.S. presidential motorcade? Is the answer A, 10, B, 100, C, 40, or D, 60? Take a big guess in the comment section below and stick around to the end of the video to find out if you were correct as we reveal the answer. Number two, the lead car. Following the sweepers is the lead car. The lead car essentially protects the motorcade from what lies ahead and is usually a Suburban whose occupants are packing enough heat to fight World War III by themselves. The lead car receives constant reports from the pilot car, the root car, and sweepers and makes decisions in accordance with current developments. Number three, the presidential limousine, aka Beast. Then follows the U.S. presidential limousine, the Beast. One of the biggest reasons why the U.S. presidential motorcade is so expensive and more so because it actually has two beasts in attendance. Incidentally, the Secret Service doesn't go by convention and calls these vehicles stagecoach. Other names used to refer to this behemoth include the first car, Cadillac 1, and the next generation parade limousine. The current iteration of this heavily armed vehicle came into use in 2018. It outwardly resembles the Cadillac CT6 sedan. The Beast is said to be the most secure vehicle of its kind and the most sophisticated too. The latest Beast is built to requirements on a medium duty truck frame. Reportedly, three of these new generation Beasts have been manufactured so far and at one and a half million dollars a pop, they are anything but cheap. Usually, two of these limousines are used at a time as a way to confuse adversaries as to where the president actually might be. The U.S. president's beast is tasked with protecting the leader of the free world and as such has armor in abundance and can survive chemical, nuclear, and biological weapon attacks. All late-gen American presidential limousines have doors that at 8 inches thick are as bulky as those used on commercial aircrafts. Windows, on the other hand, are 5 inches thick, and these can't be rolled down with the exception of the drivers, which can be rolled down only 3 inches to reportedly do tasks such as paying tolls. The underside is bombproof. We're not sure at all how much this vehicle weighs, but considering that it features greater use of lightweight materials like composites and titanium than the previous generations, it will be relatively lighter, but still much heavier than the average consumer car. The US president's security features include night vision devices, a fire suppression system, run flat tires, an explosion proof fuel tank, and an onboard oxygen supply. Also present are high-end communication gear, a supply of the president's blood, a defibrillator, plus other emergency gear for emergency purposes. The driver of the vehicle supposedly has a shotgun, but there's no word as to the kind of weapons that are in the trunk or under the seats. For offensive purposes, this presidential limousine can shoot tear gas canisters from its front bumpers. Under the hood lurks a 6.6 liter diesel engine that propels the US presidential limousine to a maximum speed of 60 miles an hour. Fuel efficiency is subpar, with both the old and new beasts reportedly delivering about 3 kilometers per liter, but then at the same time, when you are the president, you don't have to worry about how much you pay at the pump. And lest we forget, there is still a lot about the current beast that the public is unaware of due to security purposes. Big as it is, it's not all that much of a surprise to learn that the vehicle has its own aircraft to move it around. The aircraft is a C-17 Globemaster, a heavy lift aircraft that's capable of transporting main battle tanks. Number 4. The Halfback Next, following the presidential security detail, is an SUV codenamed Halfback. This SUV follows the presidential limousine and is usually a modified Chevy Suburban. 
The halfback SUV carries armed Secret Service personnel who keep an eagle eye out and are ready to intervene in case anything goes down. The guys in there are trained in VIP protection tactics and defensive driving scenarios and can be relied on to do the right thing if something were to occur en route. They usually drive with their windows and tailgate open like this one, and you can see at least a single occupant carrying a handheld weapon. So what do you think of all the nicknames? Are they cool or are they childish? Drop your views in the comment section below. Number five, the Watchtower. Here comes another nickname, the Watchtower. The Watchtower is essentially the electronic countermeasure vehicle, and it follows the halfback within the anatomy that is the U.S. presidential motorcade. It's rather easy to identify this vehicle because it's the one with all sorts of antennas and domes sticking out of it. Watchtower mainly jams incoming missiles and radio comms and guided explosives. It can also jam or interfere with communications and bring down small drones when necessary. Word on the street is that the Watchtower has a laser warning receiver that lets it know when it or other vehicles in the U.S. presidential motorcade are being pointed at by lasers and infrared guidance devices of the sort used on anti-tank missiles. Should the vehicle detect such a threat, it speedily makes itself useful by firing chaff, flares, IR smoke, and anything else that'll degrade and break tracking ability down. It's important to note here that the beast, its decoy, the lead car, the watchtower, and the halfback make up what's known as the secure package. This secure package is the core that directly protects the president and if need be, can detach from the rest of the presidential motorcade and function independently. The control vehicle. Then follows the control vehicle, a highly modified SUV equipped with extensive communication gear and is one of the Chevy Suburbans that the Secret Service just has a massive heart on for. In this automobile is a highly ranking and specially vetted military personnel who's tasked with speedily and expertly advising the president if something like ah, a foreign or terrorist attack on American soil were to happen. Such an individual will also assist with the activation of the nuclear football if it comes to that. 7. Support Vehicles just next to the control vehicle is normally more than a few support vehicles. This provides transport for the important folk, like members of the cabinet and their security. Such vehicles also move the president's doctor and extra security personnel. Number 8. Counter Assault Team Vehicles Counter Assault Vehicles are then incorporated into the U.S. presidential motorcade, and these are nicknamed Hawkeye Renegade. As you might have guessed, these vehicles are normally Chevy Suburbans painted black, though often any large SUV will serve the same function. They feature rails, police lights, and running boards that enable the external carriage of agents. And yes, their tailgates are always open, just like the halfback, and seated there, facing the road, is an agent who's armed to the teeth and is in the mood to shoot first and then let St. Peter sort out things like questions and anything like that after. The counter-assault team in these vehicles are basically the hard-hitting agents of the Secret Service. Their job is to bring down a lot of hurt and heartbreak on anybody that might think of putting the U.S. presidential motorcade and its occupants in danger. All members of the CAT team are carefully chosen and trained, armed with the best weapons in the market, and aren't too shy about using them when necessary. Reportedly, these fellas also have grenades, rifles, ammo, body armor, and night vision goggles. If the presidential motorcade were to be attacked, the cat is ready, willing, and able to repel such an attack, and they can as well position themselves to counter any potential attack, making it possible for the president to be evacuated from the location with all possible haste. 9. Intelligence Division Vehicle or the ID Car Then comes the Intelligence Division Vehicle. While the motorcade is underway, the local police and other surveillance assets will communicate with personnel in this vehicle, letting them know about any developments and giving them an invaluable look at the overall state of things. That way, they're aware of everything that's going on at all times and can identify potential issues and speedily suggest effective remedies for the same. 10. Hazard Materials Mitigation Unit Next up lines up the Hazard Materials Mitigation Unit, which is usually the, again, black painted work truck that can almost be mistaken for a hearse. It's stuffed in the ceiling with state-of-the-art sensors that let it rapidly detect chemical, biological, and nuclear weapon attacks on the motorcade and respond to these as speedily as possible. It's also used as a mobile warehouse and carries stuff useful to itself and other vehicles in the presidential motorcade. Highly trained hazmat teams staff these vehicles, and they absolutely know what they're doing. Number 11. Press Van Ah, yeah, we can't really forget about the press, can we? Right? Yeah, okay, their vans come next. These are usually reserved for members of the White House Press Corps, as well as the White House media team, and multiple press vans can be required at any given time. 12. The White House Communication Agency Vehicle This vehicle is codenamed Roadrunner, and is a hulking suburban that has enough communication equipment and antennas inside of it, and on top of it, to reach out to almost anyone on this green earth. This vehicle is one of the easiest to spot and looks like a rolling telecommunications tower, which 
it is. This automobile provides secure and encrypted communication to the president and his officials that enable them to get in touch with virtually anybody they wish in the convoy and anywhere around the world for that matter. It's also possible that Roadrunner can or will provide the necessary communication facilities needed to respond to and order a nuclear weapon attack. 13. Ambulance There's at least a single ambulance rolling with every recent presidential motorcade. It keeps out of sight at the rear of the convoy, and its purpose is exactly what you think. Provide aid in case of an emergency. The use of an ambulance is mainly meant for the president alone, but that's not to say that if a motorcade member ran into health difficulties, help wouldn't be provided. 14. Rear Guard The rear guard is usually comprised of a mass of local police on cars and bikes, and their job description is to just provide that advanced warning of an attack from the rear, and defend it against the same with as much testosterone as they can summon. 15. Overwatch Above the U.S. presidential motorcade is also following the Overwatch. The Overwatch is an eye in the sky, and what a big eye it's got. See, whenever the president makes a trip somewhere, the Secret Service asks to get their hands on a helicopter belonging to any one of the federal government agencies and uses this to provide Overwatch protection to the president's motorcade. This helicopter will, of course, be packed with cameras, sensors, and communication gear that let it see a lot and talk an awful lot about what it sees. 16. Ground Force One. The Secret Service may also opt to transport the President in a pair of heavily armored buses, codenamed Ground Force One. These are seldom used, but cannot be mistaken for anything else. They are all black, seriously big, and heavily armored buses that the Secret Service shelled out some serious dollars for in 2011. These vehicles are the proud result of work done by the duo of Hemphill Brothers Coach Company and Prevost Car, and its model name is X345VP3. Essentially, such buses make it possible for the president to travel to a rural area by road and in full comfort. Apart from being heavily armored, these buses also have enhanced communication gear that connects them to the Roadrunner and the world at large, plus a ton of sensors and weaponry. The second reason as to why Biden's motorcade is so expensive is the staffing. It's reported that at any one point, the motorcade is operated by a staff of at least 100 people, including the president's driver, secret service agents, and doctor. In addition, all these cars and staff members are transported everywhere the president goes, which, apart from being a logistic nightmare, is also expensive. And now the moment you've been waiting for, the quiz answer. Earlier on, we asked you how many cars make up the U.S. presidential motorcade. If you guessed 40, you're a beast. <laughs> Get it? Okay, look. On average, there are about 40 to 50 cars in any American presidential motorcade. Click on the playlist to the left to binge watch reasons why more presidential stuff, such as the Beast, Air Force One, the White House, and the Oval Office are so expensive. We'll see you there.